So I'm going to switch the energy up quite a bit here. Have you ever heard of the story of Sodom and Gomorrah? <laughs> yeah, right? So in that story, I think it's really relevant for today, and I'm going to tell you why, a few different ways. Um, today in California, we've got people, this isn't funny, evacuating, right, all the time, you know, because of the wildfires and being in this position all the time to decide, when do I go? Do I go now when there's a recommendation or when the animals are showing some signs or, you know, how do, I, how do you follow that innate wisdom that tells you it, it's time to flee? And this was a case with, with Lot and his family that they had been given information and, and received information that internally that the city was going to be destroyed and that they needed to flee. And so the angels told them, the angels metaphysically represent the divine idea. So there's a divine idea that's coming in that's saying, you better go, you better leave. It's time to evacuate. And, and they didn't listen, you know, because sometimes we don't want to go, right? This is home. This is comfortable. I'm going to wait it out. It's going to be okay. And then again, they got the information, you know, no, you really need to go. And same, same deal, kind of a little bit more hunkered down even. And finally, the angels showed up and they took their hands and they said, come on, we're going. So they're, you know, literally being led out. And as they're being led out, the angels give them this, this wise bit of advice. They say, don't just keep looking forward, move to the next place, move to your new city and do not look back. Well, you know, the human mind, how curious we are, how connected we are, how attached we are. And so Lot's wife, she just couldn't stand it. And she had to turn around and look back. And when she did, anybody know what happened? Oh my gosh, look at, listen to all you, all you. You must have gone through confirmation in Bible school. <laughs> she turned into a pillar of salt. It's bizarre and wonderful, this story, you know? So in those days, salt was really the only preservative. And so she turned into a forever preserved memory attached to the past. That's essentially what happened there. No power of release going on there. And that is the power of the day. So the power of the day is release, sometimes called renunciation, sometimes called elimination. And it's a, obviously about letting go, having the courage and the wherewithal and the wisdom to know what needs to go that isn't serving us and when it needs to go. And it, this is represented by the area of the body. I know there are probably going to be some groans, the large intestines and the colon, you know? <laughs> And even represented by the color brown, I'm sorry. It's, it's true. <laughs> or russet, actually, is the actual color. So, and, and I got to tell you, okay, let move your minds off of that. I, but I have to tell you, there's actually really some good stuff around this because it gives us some very practical advice. Now, this is very private matter. I don't want anybody to share this with anyone. But you know how that part of your body's working right now, right? You know if there's like lots, you know, if you're like holding on or if you're letting go and how much energy is too much and, and, and what's the balance, you know? And our bodies, this is the brilliance of these locations. I know you're all looking at me like, I can't believe she's talking about this. <laughs> but the brilliance of these body locations is that because they're representative and, and because our, our whole spiritual walk is about wholeness. It's not just about the transcendent divine, but it's about the embodied experience as a human being who is divine in our essence. And so using and allowing ourselves to be connected with the body helps give us the wisdom and access the constant wisdom that is available to us. So noticing these, you know, Louise Hay is the one who put all the metaphysics to the different body ailments, you know? And so, and it was brilliant because it helps us understand what's going on for us. So if we do notice something in this area of our bodies that's not quite in balance, we can look to the power of release and activate that power more fully. And as we do so, then all aspects of being come into alignment, body, mind, spirit, and, and heart and emotions and, you know, mental capacity, all aspects of our full being come into that place. 
So this power is, I'm going to focus a little more on the release and the renunciation today part of it. So that, that's it for the elimination part. <laughs> we're moving on. Trust me here, we're, we're good. Um, <laughs> so uh, I, I want to tell you a story about a friend. Uh, a friend told me this story about this woman named Sarah. And Sarah was somebody who you might be able to relate to who was told from a very young age from her, from her mother in particular about not really having much worth. In fact, her mother's last words to her were something like, you're pathetic, which is just heartbreaking, right? That anybody could have that kind of experience. Yet Sarah herself was a very compassionate, kind being and carried none of that kind of stuff except for the underlying be beneath of not being enough the underlying belief of unworthiness. And that's one that runs through our culture. There's a lot of that core belief, right? So as we work with something like the, the power of release, we want to, if we can, if we're able to and aware of those core beliefs, we can begin to, to let them go and to break up the, those old energies. And this started to happen for Sarah. What happened was one day, she became aware of the fact that she tended to constantly say one of the other core beliefs that she held, that things could always be worse. She thought this was a positive thing to say. You know, well, things could always be worse. You know, so she would tell her stories of what was going on in her life, and she would punctuate it with, things could always be worse. And so one day she's getting her hair cut by her hairstylist, and we all know that people use that as confessional and all kinds of things, you know. <laughs> So there she was telling her hairstylist, looking in the mirror at the same time, telling her hairstylist about all this stuff that was going on in her life and then punctuating it with, things could always be worse. And her hairstylist says, while Sarah's looking in the mirror, well, you know, things could always be better too. And it was a, a moment of revelation. You know how that is, those moments, like if somebody told you at 8 a.m. yesterday, it wouldn't have like connected, but they told you today at noon and it's like, the angels began to sing. You totally got it. You aligned with it. It was the insight in the moment that you needed. And that's what happened for Sarah. So there she is looking in the mirror, hearing this and feeling it all through her body and realizing, what? Things could always be better? Things could, there's a chance things could always be better. It was like, you know, it's of course common sense, but it doesn't matter. It's not in the, you know, in us yet. And it's when those insights, those divine ideas come, come in and they really digest, then we get it. We, we, we're like, oh, we can move in that direction of things could always be better. So she was so on fire that she did something she hadn't done in years. She went to church the next day and she brought her daughter. And her daughter went to the children's church and she learned about this lesson that she brought back. I'm going to go over here to my little prop corner. And... Um, she learned this lesson that she told um, her mom about, and this also lit a new fire. So she said it wasn't a can of beans, really, but um, she, the daughter said, what we did in class today was we um, talked about our prayers, and then we decided the things we couldn't fix ourselves, we would put in this can, and the can, so they, they would, you know, they came without labels. So we just get rid of that. And, and we put a new label on it. It's the God can. And so the kids were putting their prayers in the God can. Whatever I can't do, God can. Isn't that great? And um, Sarah all of a sudden thought, that's it. I just have to peel off that old label, that old label that says I'm not good enough, and that old label that says things can always be worse. And she wrote on her can, things can always be better. So, you know, that's, that, that work is, is constant. But when we have this sort of outer representation, this object lesson, if you will, it, it really brings it home. And so she really began to work with that. And as she did, her whole life turned around. She went back to school, she became a social worker, she married another social worker, and the rest of their career, they taught thousands of people together how to remove the old labels that didn't serve and to remember that God through them can do anything. 
And so it is with us that those moments, sometimes that they're the great ahas, the great insights like Sarah had, and sometimes it's the little things. There's a constant ability for us to be able to weed out and release the things that aren't working for us, the limited, the limited ideas that we hold about ourselves all the way down to these kinds of core beliefs. The habits on the outside, you know, we could start on the outside and work our way in, or we can start on the inside where the thoughts and feelings are and the words are in between. And so you might notice that, you know, there's, there's some habit outside of you that you reach for that it's time to let go of so you can open up to what the, the splendor of you, the essence of you, the divinity of you. And you might notice then maybe it's some things that you say that sort of that, that uh, the first, uh, an earlier step of what you're co-creating the world. And so like Sarah, you might notice some things you tend to say. What is it for you? What is it that you're thinking and saying to yourself a lot or out loud that is a limited idea? Take a moment to check in. You might even want to close your eyes and just see what's, what's here for me that really is, it's time to let it go. Some limiting thought or idea about life or myself. So once we have a sense of that, we can work with our tools. One of our tools in unity is bringing in that renunciation piece, the power to say no to what doesn't work so we can affirm and say yes to what does. And so you, could, you can actually uh, recognize what is this thing that I have given power to because by believing it, by thinking it, by saying it to yourself over and over again, you, you're, you're creating that groove, right? That negative groove of what you don't want. And you're giving it power. And so to reclaim our power, whatever that is. And so one of the great ways we can renunciate, it used to be called denials or release statements, is, is to say, this has no power over me. So whatever it is, this idea of unworthiness or this fear of failing or this fear of succeeding, we often have one of both, sometimes both going at the same time. And so, you know, this fear of failing has no power over me because I am one with, with the divine intelligence of the universe. And I go forward now, opening the, the doors of my own heart and taking the first step toward the possibilities of my life. Those are the affirmations. So the renouncing is the letting go of the thing that is holding power over you, that you've given power to. It can be something on the outside. Maybe you gave sugar power and, and you're in that addictive loop of I got to have sugar, I got to have sugar in that craving loop. And you realize, oh, this isn't good for me. I, I, I want to let go of some of that so that some of the good can come through and I feel more vitalized and energized and feel healthy and whole in every way. And so we let that go. You know, sugar has no power. This craving has no power over me. The sweetness of life is available to me at any time. The sweetness of spirit is right here within me. And I have only to drop in and to feel that love and that sweetness and that knowing that all is well, that life indeed is sweet. So however you craft that for yourself, take that, that, that came to you, or maybe later you'll work with this exercise and something else will come to you, and, and work with that renouncing that it has power over you so that you can reclaim the essence and the goodness and, and open up that channel that is blocked. We don't want to become like the Dead Sea, you know, stagnant with no life in it. And if we don't release, that's what happens. So it's the constant letting go of the limitations and the labels and the things that have kept us constricted and small so that we can indeed be who we have come to be. The magnificence that is in you wants to be released. The splendor of you, the divine light of you, it, it's, it's desiring to be released. The only thing that stands in the way are those, those limited ways of thinking and being. So we just let go of them. It's easier said than done, isn't it? <laughs> I love to weed. Does anybody else love to weed? Oh, good. Some of you do. Here's one of my prized possessions from this summer. I mean, that's a good one, huh? Sorry, Charlene, it's a mess. 
<laughs> so it did have a root too. I did get it all the way to the root. But I could tell you, this was so pleasurable to pull this big guy up. Now you might notice that I also still have it. And I pulled this out like a month ago. Now I'm not really a huge pack rat, although Brenly might, might differ. Um, <laughs> But I just happened to be walking to the park one day, and it was there, and it was covering up all the beautiful flowers and greenery, and it brought me so much pleasure just to get this big old thing out of the way, you know? And this is sort of what it's like in our consciousness when we walk around with a bunch of stuff hanging out in there that we don't need anymore. Can you see me very well? <laughs> Not as well, right? I can't see myself as well either if I look in the mirror, but if I take this old thing out, wow. Oh, it's so much better. Everything's so much clearer. I can see you. You can see me. We have the, the essence of, of what we are available to us. And so it's as easy as weeding. It's as easy as deadheading a flower and just as satisfying as we let go of these things, unload these things that are burdening the essence of who we are, that are blocking, that are bringing darkness to areas that are meant to be full-on radiant light. So we can renounce by renouncing something has the power over us. We can renounce people's opinions of us, their labels that they've put on us that we've taken on, like Sarah did of the labels her mother gave her. And we could say other people's opinions have no power over me. I am one with a divinity that knows the truth of who I am. And I stay true to, and answer only to that one true being within me that knows who I am. So... It's that letting go, it's that renouncing, and it's also the ability to say no. In unity, we're a positive path for spiritual living, and so we love the affirmations and the positive side, so we kind of overlook the, the side, this side, the power of release, the things that stand in the way. But we absolutely have to do this part too, or, or the abundant flow of good will not, will not flow as easily and effortlessly as it is meant to. So I want to offer you an exercise that shows up in Paul Hasselbeck's book, which he co-authored with Cher Holton. And so in this one, I want to invite you again, this exercise, just to tune in again. Maybe the same thing that you want to release that we did in the first exercise will come, and maybe something else. So just see, there's some limited idea, some, something that you need to say no to in your life. Once you really can feel that, that thing, that way of being, that way of thinking, that habit that needs to go, let, let yourself really feel how it doesn't work for you for a minute, how it blocks you. You might even see the darkness that comes as you hold this idea, this limiting idea. Now we're going to muster up our power of power and really speak a strong no to it. So I just invite you to even out loud, really strong, just no. 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 Yeah. So you feel as you say no, you kind of open up, you know, we used to say it creates a vacuum, right? There's, a, there's an opening now. and There's an opening for the good to come forth. And, and in this exercise... As we are saying no, because we may still have resistance to even saying no, no, K-N-O-W, when you are saying no, that there is a wiser part of you that knows. So when you say no to, I can't do this right now, or I'm not willing to move in that direction, or I, I need to stop thinking this way, or whatever it is, think to yourself, that's a K-N-O-W, because there's a knowing inside of you. There's a wisdom inside of you that knows what the N-O is about. So you're getting to that deeper space of, I'm tapping the wisdom that, that knows that the no is for the highest and best good. So where you find resistance even to the no, this may help you to, to relabel that. K-N-O-W, I know, I know. And it's coming from that inner knowing within me. So we're renouncing in these different ways. We're weeding, basically, the, the weedy places within us, in our minds and in our hearts, and we're opening up greater space. 
and, and then Jesus returns us to Lot in Luke. And when, when he's asked by the Pharisees and the Sadducees, how do you get to the kingdom? You know, how do you, this kingdom, this idea of everlasting, and, and some of the Sadducees, Sadducees and Pharisees probably imagine that to be the afterlife or some place. But some of them understood that it was here and now and available, and there was something about that that, that he himself was dwelling in all the time, and some of his followers were dwelling in all the time, and that each of us is dwelling in or having the ability to dwell in any time and tapping in and out of that. And so how is it that you get to the kingdom? And he says in response, remember Lot's wife. And then he goes on to say, whatever you have held in your life, the ways that you are trying to make your life secure, the people who are trying to do that, to make their lives secure, will lose their lives. But those who lose their lives will keep it's a really deep teaching, but it gets to the, the essence of what surrender is about, or about release is about, which is surrendering over, giving over to spirit. And so giving over then, being willing to let go of whatever it is that we need to let go. Sometimes that's, you know, letting go of, of commitments that we've made that no longer serve us. Sometimes it's the limiting thoughts that we've talked about or the labels, but whatever it is, you know what you need to let go of. And so remember that pillar of salt, that place of, of preserved attachment that is forever, forever, everlasting, preserved in that space. No life, no movement anymore, no evolution anymore, no growth. And instead, open up to the knowing that whatever you give over, whoever is willing to lose everything that is outside of their lives will gain everything. St. Teresa of Avila said, we're like the young man who came to Jesus and said, how do I get into the kingdom? And Jesus said, sell everything and follow me. And the young man was very wealthy. And he said, oh, and he turned around. And she said, we're like that man who just, you know, we, we want it. We want to be a part of the kingdom. We want this, this knowing of the divinity in us. We want to dwell in the joy and the love and the happiness and the light. And we want to be on purpose and we want to create in our lives. And we want to wake up every day and be like, yeah, this is it. I'm on fire. This is what my life is about. It's connected. It's healthy. It's whole in every way. Don't we all want that? But then sometimes we learn got to go through the narrow gate of, of the divine path and we go, oh, see ya. <laughs> you know, I think I'll go just, you know, reach for my outer comforts. So it's, it's a journey that, you know, we need to be willing to take and maybe it's one step at a time. Maybe it's just releasing one, maybe this week it's just releasing that one thing that came to you today saying no to that, recognizing that that itself has no power over you, and feel the freedom of that. And once you taste that freedom, it'll be yet another thing that you'll want to release, and yet another thing, and yet another thing. And before you know it, there's a, there's a freedness that is all that history is behind you. And now it's just a one at a time as things come in the present day and the present moment that can be released like this, because we get it now. We get the true law of circulation. That's what we're really moving to, full abundance in every way as we free ourselves from the blocks to our good. So let's know this together. Let's speak this affirmation, really feeling it as we release these blocks and move into our full abundance. Together, I release all that blocks my good and infinite abundance flows to, through, and as me. And so it is.